We're celebrating a lot of different things. March is National Nutrition Month. Today happens to be National Dietitian Day. Um, so I guess we should be celebrating that. And this is our third annual Denny Nautilus Memorial Luncheon. And in case you guys aren't aware, Denny was a dietitian here for many years um, and is a, was a cancer patient herself. And so this is sort of in honor of her. And all of her family is over here with us that are honored guests today. So, um, so third annual. So with any luck, we'll have many, many more to come. Yes. So, <laughs> thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and get Hedigan started, and um, I'm sort of informal in my presentation style, so if you have questions, please don't hesitate to interrupt me, um, and we'll go from there. And again, if, if you're missing anything, just raise your hand, and they'll come around. Um, let's see. I think there's some chairs over here if you guys want to take some of those chairs. Take your time. Don't worry. Take your time. I just got started. There's some chairs. All right, so the word superfood is sort of, I don't know, this new word out there that doesn't really have a technical definition, but this presentation is kind of my summary of what I believe to be the, the sort of most powerful foods that nature has to offer. Um, just to go back a little bit, you know, nutrition is so critical for our overall health, and, and this presentation doesn't just talk about cancer, it just talks about health in general. But one thing that's really important to realize is that the top 10 causes of death in the United States include four that are or may be preventable by diet or possibly treatable. So I think this is just, you know, gives a lot of power to how important our um, diet is and what we put into our bodies. Of course, cancer being number two, that's, you know, our kind of primary focus here in the cancer hospital. But um, heart disease, stroke, and diabetes are also critical chronic diseases that we face in our country. Um, lots of research highlights the impact of nutrition on preventing and even treating these diseases. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the DASH diet, but that's used to treat high blood pressure. Um, and it's been found to be very effective, almost as effective, if not more, than medication. Um, there's um, other studies, the Pritikin and Ornish diets, that are, have found to reverse heart disease. Um, the Diabetes Prevention Project um, found that diet was actually more effective than medicine. Um, in preventing diabetes. So those are just some examples from the research today um, in how important nutrition is. So again, this is just a busy slide, but it just kind of highlights, again, the preventable causes of premature death in our country. And when you add up everything that's all related to nutrition, it's about 45% of all deaths down there at the bottom that can be attributed to poor nutrition. So that's a big deal. Um, you know, we have a lot of things that we can do to improve our health. So I want to kind of go through some of the different nutrition recommendations from the leading um, sort of organizations out there. The American Heart Association tells us to eat a variety of fruits and vegetables, to use unrefined whole grain foods that contain fiber, and to eat fish several times a week. The American Diabetes Association, again, says choose your fruits and vegetables and whole grains. Um, and, and make sure at least half of the whole grains that you, half the, half of the grains you eat are whole, and choose healthy fats from fish, nuts, and vegetable oil. American Cancer Society, very similar message. Eat a healthy diet based on plant sources, fruits and vegetables every day, whole grains over processed, and limit intake of red meat. And the American Institute for Cancer Research has a very similar message. Again, mostly plant foods, watching your red meat intake, and um, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans being two thirds or more of your plate. So, you know, there's a common message here through all of these recommendations from all the different um, chronic disease agencies out there. So let's touch on what I think are sort of the best ones and the most important ones to get in daily. This is a list. And there's a summary of this presentation in your handouts that are over here. Everybody can get them on the way out. There's a pink and a green handout. And um, one of them is the recipes for all the foods you're eating today. Um, our catering department so wonderfully prepared all this food, but um, they've, they've all been recipes that I've sort of gathered together over the years. And some of you actually might have had some of these foods before if you were in other programs with me. So going into the beans category, another word for beans is legumes. So now I need some help. Tell me what are beans. Give me some examples. 
Anyone? Shout it out. Kidney, black, lima, lentil, garbanzo, or chickpeas, soy, soybeans, right? Navy beans. Navy beans. Black eyed peas. We're in the south. <laughs> so those are important beans as well. Um, lentils, green peas are even in this category, and then your soybeans, which we already mentioned. So lots of different things fit under this category, and beans are very healthy. So why should we bother with beans? Well, first off, they're loaded with fiber, which is very healthy for helping us keep our cholesterol levels, levels under control, stabilizing blood sugar. Um, they're also loaded with lots of other nutrients, including antioxidants, folate, magnesium, iron, manganese, and protein. All of this has been shown to decrease heart disease risk and boost energy levels. Actually, higher consumption of legumes was associated with an 82% reduction in risk from death from heart disease. So that's a pretty big number. Um, people eating the most fiber from beans had 12% less coronary heart disease, 11% less cardiovascular disease compared to those eating the least. Um, you get, and as I mentioned, you get lots of different nutrients from beans, and just a small amount gives you a whole lot. They're also loaded with phytochemicals, which have been shown to inhibit the reproduction of cancer cells. And there's all kinds of different components in beans that, they, that are being studied that can show, slow the growth of tumors and just improve outcome overall in regards to cancer. <clears throat> so how do we get in more beans? This is sort of some of the cheap tricks that I use, I guess. The canned beans are a fine option to use. One thing that you can do since with the canning, there usually is more salt or sodium. If you rinse the beans, you put them in like a colander or strainer and rinse them until the water runs clear and it doesn't look soapy, you're getting rid of lots of the salt. Of course, you can always make your own from the dry beans, but that takes a little bit longer. Um, other options for using beans, sprinkle them on salads, mix them with rice or couscous, try bean soup, and then mix um, with different sort of Mexican flavors for like, a yummy burrito. You guys are currently eating um, a black bean uh, barley combination dish, and you can identify which one's which. You're eating some green beans, which aren't really in this category, but they're you know, called beans. And then soybeans are in, or edamame are in the, the rice dish, the brown rice. So those are all there. Berries. All right, this one's an easy one. What are some berries? Blackberries, raspberries, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, blueberries, strawberries, good. Those are the traditional ones that we're all sort of aware of. Um, and the bright, more brightly colored berries are really the most potent. So you want to take advantage of the, the bright colors. Um, there, the American Institute for Cancer Research, in conjunction with the World Cancer Research Fund, put out their um, second annual international report of the literature, and they showed that foods high in vitamin C, which of course are berries, um, probably protect against cancer of the esophagus, and the fiber in your berries also protect against colorectal cancer. So there's lots of different components in the berries that help to fight cancer, um, antioxidants, vitamins. C and E. Of course, it also helps with heart disease, um, reducing oxidative stress, and then slowing macular degeneration. And then fiber, of course, helps with the elimination and cholesterol. So how do we use our berries? This is a tricky thing because, of course, the best time for berries is not right now, which is why you guys don't have that many in your fruit salad. Um, you know, in the summertime, certainly, you want to go all out and have lots of wonderfully fresh berries. berries but for the rest of the year, to try to buy fresh is kind of crazy because they don't taste that good and they're not um, very cheap. So what I always suggest is using frozen, and that's a great option. They're frozen at peak ripeness, so don't hesitate to use your frozen berries. Mix them into your cereal or salad. Maybe make a smoothie or a milkshake, different kinds of um, yummy things that you can do with berries. You can also add them to your muffins or your quick breads, um, and that's a good way to get in additional nutrients. 